All right, welcome back in, guys, to the Go247 podcast. I'm Glenn West, uh, the senior writer here at the site, uh, joined once again uh, by Dylan Sanders, our contributing writer, contributing student writer. Uh, big weekend, big weekend for LSU here. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying not to get uh, caught up in the trap game as well. We're, 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 we're hard at work. We're putting out some good stuff. Hopefully you guys are, are liking it. And uh, uh, obviously LSU is now in a, a position here where – they control their own destiny. Um, you know, they, they got the big win over Alabama. Um, but the the word trap, the words let down, uh, we're, we're, we've been we've been throwing them around all week here for this game. Um, are those good verbiages to use, Dylan? Is there anything else we could throw uh, at, at this as a potential uh, potential game for this weekend? Um, the only other word I would try and put is I'm trying to think of how I'd say it is. I guess overrated. It's an overrated matchup because I think LSU is going to go in and be fine. I feel like people are trying to drum up uh, a lot of like, oh, well, you know, they're going to let down. I don't buy it. I really, with, with what this team's been through, and uh, it's not like this team has been coasting to uh, win one away from uh, SEC championship. It's not been an easy road. I feel like they've had enough controversy to know that you have to take every week at its face value, the trap games were Auburn and Florida. Yeah. They, they, they felt that they were pushed. Um, they, they felt um, the energy. It was hard, hard wins on the road. Uh, but now I think that, I think they're fine. I think they're to, to the point of the season where you don't really have to worry about that right now. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll get into all of it here as we preview this matchup. Um yeah, I mean, look, I I would say probably just to start off, you know, you're looking – you look at the Vegas line at three and a half, three, it's kind of been fluctuating between the two, um, you know, all week. And so maybe that is is maybe one reason why that's been thrown around a little bit, you know, in terms of trap game and, and all that stuff. But, look, at the end of the day, LSU is in a great position here. Um, and, and, and I think they have the right guy to, get, to guide them through this. I mean, Brian Kelly – um, you, you look at his numbers in November, the last three or four years, uh, he's won 17 straight games in November, which tells you uh, really all you need to know, that his teams are playing their best football at this time of year, the most important time of year um, for, for LSU in terms of just the standings, in terms of getting yourself uh, ready for, for a potential postseason run. All this uh, you know, kind of outside noise in terms of just kind of being a, a game that, that could get a little hairy for LSU. I, I don't get the sense, you know, in talking with players and certainly with Coach Kelly throughout the week. Uh, we just got back uh, from his Thursday press conference, and I actually just asked him straight up, you know, just how's the resolve been of this group? How's the the preparation, the, the focus been after such an emotional weekend? And he said it's been great. It's been exactly what they hoped uh, would, would be, uh, you know, in terms of turning focus to Arkansas, uh, and getting ready for this game here on a on a Saturday morning, you know, we'll we'll have our Irish coffees, I guess, at home, and uh, you know, for the select f- few fans who decide to travel up to Fayetteville, uh, make sure you pack cold. Uh, it's going to be a, a nippy, a little bit nippy. Apparently, 36 degrees was the last I saw uh, at time of kickoff is is what you got to look forward to, but. Uh, we'll be we'll be here at the comfort of our own homes covering this game. But uh, I uh, uh, while we're while we're talking about it, I do want to point back just just to give people a, a point of example. We talked about Brian Kelly's 17 straight games in in November uh, 2020. Notre Dame number four ranked Notre Dame beats Clemson at home, 47 to 40. Tough fought game against a high ranked opponent. Then they go on the road the next week. And take care of business. Beat, uh, uh, I think that was like a five and six, six and five Boston College team on the road, forty-five to thirty-one. Handle business. That's just like a point of like this same time of year, same exact situation. Handled business. Yep. Yeah. I mean, look, that's been his mo. I mean, part of the reason you brought him here was not only to get you through to the big games, um, but. To, to take care of the, the games you should take care of. I think that's been his big track record over his career. That's why he's won so many games. Uh, he gets his team playing the best ball of the year, and we'll, we'll certainly dive into it here. I think we could probably start uh, with the offense here. Um, look, uh, uh, just some opening thoughts here. Uh, 
Jaden Daniels has been fantastic. We all know it. Uh, but LSU is really going to have an advantage through the air, I think, this weekend. You look at some of the numbers from Arkansas, it's one of the keys to the game that I pointed out in our preview and predictions piece. Just Arkansas is not very good against the pass. I think they're ranked number 129 or 130 out of 131 teams in terms of total yards allowed. I think they're averaging uh, 302 yards uh, through the air to opposing quarterbacks. So if I'm Jaden Daniels, I'm looking at this game and I'm looking at Kayshawn Booty. I'm looking at Malik Neighbors. I'm looking at Mason Taylor. I'm looking at Jack Besh. I'm looking at Brian Thomas. Uh, all of these guys I would expect to be very heavily involved on Saturday, regardless of the weather conditions, I think LSU is, uh, you know, they they, they they understand what what that kind of entails in terms of cold weather. But um, I, I think this is going to be a potentially huge day for the passing game. Um, it's set up that way. LSU's just looked extremely comfortable on offense. You know, really the last three weeks, three games of the year. Um, they, they've, they've, they've done a, they've done their job. They've done a really nice job of, of kind of turning over that new leaf, being aggressive. Um, and it starts with Jaden Daniels. It starts with how he has, uh, really just blown up. I mean, there's really no other way to say it. He is playing as good as any other college player right now in, in, in the country. He has been that special for LSU. Um, you know, people are, I guess it would probably be a little bit too premature to throw him in the Heisman conversation, but, if he keeps playing the way he has been these last three weeks, um, he, he could have some ridiculously good numbers by the end of the season, and they, maybe that becomes a conversation. But just, Dylan, what, what, what do you think, I guess, offensively is kind of the advantage here for LSU? It certainly seems like it's going to be in the passing game. Yeah, for sure. Passing game is going to be uh, where – where they get their money this weekend. And of course, I mean, we have to, we have to assume at this point, I felt like it's every week they have a solid, now they have a solid running game, solid, uh, Jane Daniels runs all over. He's eighth in the eighth in the sec in rushing yards, uh, at quarterback, which is crazy. Um, and then work through the air. I mean, I feel like they have the game plan now and I don't see a team on the rest in the rest rest of the way in the schedule that is going to throw that off. Um, the only thing in uh, Arkansas does have a pretty good pass rushing game. They're one of the best pass rushing teams in the country. I think the 13th in sacks right now, uh, Drew Sanders, Landon Jackson, former LSU tiger. Um, they, they lead the way there. It's a, yeah, it's a good, it's a good Arkansas defense, but it's just like the rest of the team hasn't been as good as everybody had hoped. Um, Dwight McLaughlin out there on the boundary, uh, had a, had a good start at the season, kind of regressed to the mean now, both of, both of, you know, it's, it's just not the best Arkansas defense of all time. And I think LSU's offense, the way they've been moving should be, should be fine. Yeah. There's been, there's been a lot of talk this week about, you know, the LSU offensive line too. I think it, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring that up, but the way that those guys have been playing, I mean, that's kind of the engine that starts everything is those guys getting the push up front. They've been great at opening up some holes for the running game, uh, getting yourself into second and third and short situations. I I did do a little bit of research earlier this week and, and pulled up a couple stats on the O-line. And, um, you know, this is a group right now that ranks number one in offensive line stuff rate, uh, which is meaning that they are getting the push up front. They are opening up holes, um, you know, for these running backs. And then they're also number five in pressure rate, which means that they are really uh, keeping it a clean pocket for Jaden Daniels. And it's been a, a really good all-around effort for these guys as they found some continuity. Um, just a little bit of an update, I guess, on the O-line. Um, you know, Garrett Dellinger will be back in the lineup. He'll be back in the rotation. He's making the trip uh, to, to, to Fayetteville and – um, Brian Kelly says he's going to have a spot in the rotation, but wouldn't expect him to start. I would expect LSU to continue to roll with that Miles Frazier, Anthony Bradford, Charles Turner interior with uh, obviously Emory Jones and Will Campbell, the two freshmen on the outside. But just having that extra guy in there for depth, I think will do wonders for this offensive line and uh, really mainstay that, that that continuity and that chemistry that they've been building. Uh, it'll be good to have Garrett Dellinger back out there for LSU. Um, you know, I, I, I just am, I'm really interested to see how, you know, this group looks at the whole in terms of just now that you're playing for something, do you come out and look a little bit pressed or do you, if things maybe don't go, you know, 
splendidly right out the gate. You know, I, I'm not so much worried about that just because it really hasn't been that way all season for LSU in terms of just getting off the right way. Uh, I guess at this point in the year, that could be a little bit of a scary thing, but they've had so much, um, you know, just opportunities at, at playing in that kind of environment and playing that kind of way uh, that that doesn't really bother me much. Just, you know, I guess, Dylan, just closing out offense for a little bit, just any final thoughts you have on just who you're going to be looking at, what you're going to be looking at, and um, and, and really just the offensive line. I mean, that's that, that was one of the big takeaways I had from this week's uh, just talking with everybody around the program. Yeah, I mean, it feels like every week we go into it saying, hey, well, this is a pretty good defensive line. I mean, welcome to the SEC uh, at this point. But uh, this is a good pass rushing game. But, I mean, they've they've held their own. They LSU does rank pretty low in the country in terms of sacks, sacks yeah. allowed. But, uh, you know, they've overcome that at this point. They're looking better than they were. Um, and a lot of those early sacks were on Jaden uh, just being indecisive. We just don't see that anymore. And, uh, you know, Alabama did their thing because Alabama is always going to do their thing with who they have on that on that defensive line. Uh, but, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that offensive line holds up. Uh, they've been pretty they've been it's really been surprised a surprising group. Um, yeah. Also want to see if Mason Taylor can ride the uh, ride the momentum because, you know, we've seen they, they we know they want to get him heavily involved in game plans. Now he had the game of his life and uh, see if he can of course, stay focused and, and right through. That's the, the MO of this game is staying focused. The offense now getting all the praise in the world. Uh, and, you know, people are saying Jaden Daniels Heisman contender, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just, again, I just, I just want to see them come out and play focused. And I, I have no reason to believe at this point in the season, I, I just don't buy into the, Oh, they beat Bama. Now they don't care, and they're gonna lose to an Arkansas team that is pretty bad at this point. Yeah, I mean that's I mean that's why you have Kelly here, and I think that they've done a nice job uh, of really instilling the important messages of of staying consistent week in week out. And I, I don't have a big issue or a big problem with 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 kind of how that's that's being approached. Uh, you did bring up a good point with Mason Taylor. I just you know, coming off of those two catches or the three catches total, but the two catches there at the very end that were so crucial to LSU pulling out that game. I will be interested to see if they expand his his volume a little bit more. You know, really the last three, four games, he he hasn't been kind of the central focus that he was earlier in the year. And I think that's done wonders for him, honestly. You know, you get him in specifically drawn up situations as opposed to just always being the check down guy for Jaden. Um, that that's really allowed him, I think, to thrive in this offense. So I'm not sure how much how, how much you 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 tinker with that in terms of just how much you know more volume you want from him. But he he's been so good at the opportune times for LSU coming up with a big catch. He's been really good in the catch and run. You know, he's 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 been a a pretty consistent you know in terms of just getting the short pass and turning it upfield for big yards. Um, that's been kind of a common theme for him uh, in recent games. So, yeah, I'm going to be very interested to see how they how they open it up with Mason Taylor. But I, I do think the the crux of this game, at least offensively, is going to have to come through the air and with those receivers. I think that's uh, I think you could you you you're, you're in for a pretty good game uh, for, for 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 the offense in terms of passing yards and kind of getting this thing off. I think hopefully to a, to a little bit of a better start than what they have been doing, but. Um, yeah, they, I mean, they, they, at this point, it's more about, it's more about this Arkansas defense stepping up and proving that they can stop the offenses in these big games. They've had the test. They have one of the hardest, hardest schedules in the country and they just have failed pretty much all of their tests except for the, the, uh, the Cincinnati game at the beginning of the season. And right now, uh, they are just not the same team that they were week one, whether it be injuries or momentum or hype confidence. I just, I don't know. It's, it's more, it's all, it's all been about LSU proving themselves. I feel like LSU has proved themselves and now it's all about Arkansas proving themselves. It's a little bit of a switch of what I think the, the message has been throughout the week. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, and, you know, I guess that can lead us into what I think is probably going to be uh, the biggest danger for LSU, which is going to be on the defensive side of the ball and the way that Arkansas runs it. Um, you know, Arkansas comes into this thing 
uh, you know, I think top 10 in the country in, in rushing yards a game. They're, they're averaging well over uh, 200 yards a game uh, through the, through the ground. And um, that, that starts with KJ Jefferson. That starts with uh, Sanders, their running back. Those guys have been really, really efficient running the football. Um, Sanders, the running back is averaging six, six point four yards a carry uh, this season. So, uh, this is going to be another one of those games where you're looking at Makai Wingo, or you're looking at Jaqueline Roy, um, you're, you're, you're looking at Micah Baskerville, all these guys to get into the middle. Because uh, I, I do think this is probably more of a uh, uh, an uphill you know, kind of running attack. This is not a running attack that likes to go side to side a whole lot. Um, you know, Jefferson is kind of a different you know, runner. Uh, he's a really effective runner, but he's different from some of the other quarterbacks that LSU's played this year. Uh, he's kind of more of a north kind of bruiser, physical, uh, making mm-hmm. uh, you know, break tackle kind of guy. And so it's going to be really important for this line, for this front seven, really, to be physical and to more importantly, wrap up and tackle and make sure you're getting these guys to the ground. Um, going to be another big weekend for Harold Perkins off the edge. Uh, you just get that feel that he is really uh, solidified himself as a 60, 65 to 70 snap kind of guy, a uh, guy who can really be involved uh, throughout the entire game as opposed to just certain packages. So look for him to be on the field a lot more, just like he was last weekend. But, um, you know, I, I just – I think defensively it's really going to come down to the run game and how you're able to uh, to, to throw off KJ and make him be uh, a guy that beats you with his arm, which he which he can be capable of doing. He, he, he has a good arm, and uh, but you really can't afford to make him a, a true dual threat guy. Yeah, it's 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 the question though is if KJ Jefferson plays. Whenever he's healthy, yeah. he is one of the most dangerous quarterbacks in the country. But uh, he's not healthy right now. He's not a hundred percent. Even if he plays, he won't be the same KJ Jefferson. He looked really rough last week against Liberty. Um, it is a good Liberty team, but he had he increased his. Uh, in, interception percent. He tripled his interception percentage on the on this uh, interception count on the season. Uh, he had a fumble. It's you know, if he doesn't play, then LSU can pretty much fully focus on stopping the run game, um, which they still will have to focus because we'll get to their running back in a second. But if if he doesn't play, it's Malik Hornsby. Uh, sounds like it'll it'll be him ready to go, and he. Hasn't done much in his career. He's the same kind of quarterback as KJ Jefferson. He ran the ball for over 100 yards against Mississippi State, where he played the most of his career, but he was also 8 of 17 passing. So it, this game kind of comes down to if KJ Jefferson plays, which if I had to put money, I bet he would at least start the game. Yeah, um, no, I, I think so. The, the stuff that I've been reading and kind of hearing is just uh, he's got a nagging shoulder injury right now. And so even mm-hmm. if he does play, I wouldn't expect their game plan to revolve a whole lot around the pass. You know, if he's if he's playing, um, you know, you saw some of the struggles last week with with, with Liberty. Um, you, you're, I think that makes you even more of a case for LSU to to really play this as a run heavy kind of scheme that they're going to be facing. Um, but you know, Kate, he does have a good arm. I mean, like that that's that's one of the things that you know Coach Kelly's talked about this 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 year or this week, I should say. He's uh, he's truly a dual threat guy. He's a guy that can beat you with his arm if he's healthy. And like you said, he's really not right now. So I do think it's going to be really predicated on the run, whether it's him or Hornsby. And we actually asked a little bit about uh, Hornsby today. And Kelly says they've been preparing for both options. They've been preparing for both guys this week. It's kind of what you have to do uh, in this situation. But, um, you know, you did a pretty detailed kind of um, breakdown of Arkansas earlier this week. Um, you know, just talk about Raheem Sanders, their running back. He's he's a pretty uh, electric runner, and I think he's probably the guy that LSU is going to have to to really worry about the most uh, out of this Arkansas offense. Yeah, Raheem Rocket Sanders is uh, one of the more one of the more fun backs in the country. I'd say he has a he has an argument for the uh, for the crown of best running back in the SEC. He's uh, he's really well rounded. He can he's a receiving threat out of the backfield. He's big 6'2", 20, 225. Um, and yeah, he leads the sec in rushing yards. He's just big and fast and moves quicker and, uh, more sly than he should at his size. So yeah, he's overall just a scary back. So LSU's, uh, tackling, uh, has not been the best at times this season. 
it's going to be something where they have to tackle and tackle well uh, to be able to bring down a Sanders. The thing is he, he leads the SEC in rushing yards, but with that troubling uh, red zone offense that Arkansas has, he hasn't found the end zone a ton this year. So that could be uh, a good sign for LSU uh, because LSU has been stellar in the red zone. So that's kind of a, a matchup where LSU wins at the red zone defense versus red zone offense. So it's all about keeping that the same as it has been uh, for both of these teams all season. Yeah, I mean, you, you all you have to do is go back and look at the Alabama game last weekend. I mean, the Crimson Tide, uh, they were able to move the ball uh, on LSU in the first half, but what really really saved LSU and kind of kept them in it was LSU got the – well, the first drive, they got the interception from Bernard Converse, but pretty much the rest of the night they were holding them to field goals uh, You know, the, that, that for the rest of that first half. And so that's going to be crucial is if, you know, Arkansas moves the ball down the field – uh, making sure you bend but don't break. That's a pretty uh, uh, tired, I guess, saying, adage, whatever you want to call it. But uh, holding those guys to field goals uh, is going to be uh, going to be really huge. And, and obviously, you know, clamping down on Raheem Sanders. They do have a couple of uh, receivers you're going to have to kind of keep out, uh, keep out, keep on the lookout for. Uh, you know, Jaden Hazelwood is a guy that comes to mind. Matt Landers, uh, those are guys that have combined for, I think a good portion of, of Arkansas's catches this year. I think they've combined for like 79, 80 catches and a, a good a good chunk of K.J. Jefferson's passing yards. So he has some guys that he really trusts. Um, you know, if it's Hornsby, um, you know, I, I, I think the scheme relatively stays the same. I don't know that it differs all that much from Jefferson to Hornsby, um, but it's going to be uh, – it's just going to be really important that LSU tackle well – uh, that they have some of that consistency in the secondary. Uh, this is going to be a huge game for Greg Brooks and, and for Joe Fouché going back to, to Arkansas where they played the last three or four years. Um, so, you know, just making sure those guys are mentally right. I think they want to they want to be a, a big part of, their, of LSU's success on Saturday. But, you know, making sure that they don't get too amped up I think is going to be important for those two guys. They played really well. Uh, the last couple weeks, especially Fouché, I thought he had a really nice game against Alabama. Um, but you know, it's 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 going to be important for for really LSU's entire defense to just stay focused uh, and, and bend but don't break. Yeah, I want to ask you, talking to players, how how do how do they feel about the weather in this game? Because that's another big big talking point for this one. Yeah, I mean, we, we kind of asked uh, – I think we asked Major Burns about it. We asked um, uh, Baskerville about it earlier this week. And, you know, they, they kind of brushed it off. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't I don't get the feeling that they think that this is – the weather is going to be a huge factor. I mean, they, they understand what the task is at hand. Um, you know, the game plan, I think, is going to be, uh, you know, just – to, to continue getting the kind of pressure on K.J. Jefferson or Hornsby or whoever's at quarterback they've been getting on these quarterbacks the last couple of weeks. I mean, that's really the, the the start of all of this for LSU has been kind of the uh, the pressure they've been getting in the backfield, whether it's, you know, it, through the run or, um, you know, or getting after the quarterbacks, these mobile quarterbacks too. So I, I don't get the sense that LSU's too worried about the weather. Um, you know, we heard it earlier this week from Kelly that, you know, they practiced in January, February, and March, and kind of had those uh, those cooler days uh, in, in Baton Rouge earlier this spring. And you know, I don't know how much you can you can't really simulate that when it's 80 degrees outside here in Baton Rouge in, in November. Uh, I bet they probably wish they had had a couple of a uh, cold 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 uh, cold days here and, and, and you know ahead of their preparation. But um, you know, I, I I don't get the sense that this is a big uh, a big deal. Uh, in terms of weather for them. Uh, but, you know, I guess with that, um, we can move on to some predictions. Uh, I think I'll let you go first. Dylan, how do you see this from playing out? Again, I I feel pretty confident uh, going into this one, which I haven't felt very confident at all this season outside of, you know, like Southern or New Mexico. Uh, so maybe that's a bad thing. Uh, but, I you know, I just – I don't buy into the – into the the trap game with this LSU team, not with Brian Kelly. I'm gonna go 38-17 LSU. Wow, wow! So I'm going, I'm going, I'm going blowout. I'm going ugly game in favor. 
we're going we're going big start uh big finish uh what's what's kind of your thinking on that i'm just a solid like a like a a, a slow cook just yeah. just have it going entire game just never really in doubt yeah yeah i think that's that's reasonable, and that's something we really haven't seen from LSU. We haven't really seen them put together four complete quarters. You know, they've been such a, a red hot second half team that it's kind of gotten them out of some sticky situations. And so, um, I, I would love to see that. I would love to see LSU's offense come out and set the tone early. Um, and uh, but you know, I, I I think this will be a little bit closer than than maybe uh, than maybe you think, Dylan. I, I have, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm going I'm going full distance. This is an ugly you know, game. Yeah, yeah, I got this in the third twenty-eight range. LSU gets you know into the thirties on offense, but you know I, I think that there's substance here to Arkansas's uh, you know running attack. I think that's they they're gonna have they're gonna find some ways to get going, and um, you know I, I think it'll be a little bit closer. But you know all, all in all, I do think this is gonna be a um, just a really important game just to get out of there with a the win. You know, I mean you're, you're mm-hmm. coming off such an emotional high last weekend of beating Alabama and Nick Saban and keeping your season alive, playing for, you know, you kind of have your eyes, you know, set on a SEC West berth. I mean, um, you, you just want to see this team come out and, and not beat themselves. And that's something that they kind of were having running into a habit of doing earlier this year. Uh, it's, kept, it's kept them in a lot of close games this year. Um, it's cost them obviously in the Tennessee game and in the Florida state game, but um, if, if they come out and play clean football, um, offense gets off to a nice start. I like their chances. I like their ability to be able to move the, the football consistently uh, and, and come up with a big couple big plays on defense and a, and a couple key stops. So uh, I, I do think it'll be a fun one. I mean, uh, for an 11 a.m. game, you have a lot riding on this game uh, for LSU. And so uh, I know a lot of the fans are going to be really up for it. And it'll be interesting to see how, uh, which, which version of this group we get and, and if this – uh, you know, what we've heard from about Brian Kelly is true and just having his teams ready to play in this time of the year. Um, uh, we'll see if that comes to fruition on, on Saturday. Um, with that, I think we might, um, uh, I, wanna- I was going to say, I was going to say, do you, if you want to, uh, we usually, uh, would end these maybe like talking around about that around the ACC. We had a couple basketball games. If you wanted to say a yeah. couple things about that, oh, yeah. uh, start of the season. Yeah, so uh, I was there for Matt McMahon's um, opener uh, on when on uh, was that Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday they played mm-hmm. uh, Kansas City on Wednesday. Um, you can tell this is going to be a work in progress with men's basketball. I don't think they're in the same spot that Kim Milkey and the women are uh, posting what 125. 125 on yeah. Bellarmine. <laughs> Probably a, a school record if I had to imagine. Um, but it, it is a school. It was a school record. Yeah, the old record was eight, 118. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, look, the men's uh, they 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 got some work to do. I, I I can't really cap on that one. They uh they really struggled defensively, uh, especially early game. Uh, Kansas City was controlling the offensive glass, which is something that I uh I mean, it was a little bit of an eyebrow raiser. You know, rebounding is something that. You know, if you talk to any basketball coach, it's effort. It's it's finding the guy to box out and just doing it. And um, you know, they 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 weren't really doing that in the first half. And so it, they they let them hang around a little bit too long for comfort. Um, you know, they 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 had some turnover issues in the second half offensively. But I thought the offense did move pretty well for a game one when you're welcoming 13 new guys to this roster. I thought they they moved the ball pretty well and. Uh, you know, Adam Miller had a really nice kind of first game in 18 months, dropped 18 points and uh, really looked comfortable doing it. So, um, you know, I, I think there's some there's some positives to take away. But, you know, as we said with Coach McMahon after the game, he said, look, we're going to have to balance between being demanding of what the program standards are and then also having some patience as we kind of get this thing going, kind of whittle down the rotations. LSU play 11 guys in the first half you're never going to see that again i don't think the rest of the year uh you're they're gonna they're gonna keep this tight to eight or nine players and so it'll be interesting to see how they bounce back against arkansas state um did you have a chance to check out the women's game any highlights of that or yeah uh, so yeah i couldn't make it to the game um 
It, but it was about as much of a poster first week as you could ask for of a season for uh, Kim Mulkey and the squad. They, they're really preaching this showtime, welcome to the show um, kind of atmosphere for this season. And then they come out, drop 125. We hadn't seen it. We didn't get to see Angel Reese uh, in the exhibition game. She, in her LSU debut, she dropped 31 points, 13 rebounds, two assists, four steals, and two blocks. Uh, about as good of a, a debut for a school as you could have. She was the the number one transfer in the country um, and really proving that she belongs and can play in that, uh, you know, well, again, it was against Bellarmine, but she's really good. Flege Johnson looks like she's going to be a bucket. Jasmine Carson uh, had a really good night. You have Kateri Poole coming off the, uh, coming off the bench. She looks like she'll be a solid uh, sixth woman, six man. I don't know what they call it. Uh, yeah. but, uh, she's going to be solid off the bench. Um, and you know, this team's really, really good. They, and of course they signed the number one, uh, recruiting class this week, which was also another huge win. So things are looking up. There was, we were talking about it on the board and they were asking who's going to win the first championship, Brian Kelly or, uh, Kim Mulkey. I think, Within the next four years, there are three major LSU sports that have a chance at walking away with a trophy. Uh, women's basketball, baseball, Jay Johnson, and Brian Kelly. All within the next four or five years, it could be it's conceivable to have three national championships come to the school. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think that's um, – yeah, it's, it's a good way to wrap it up and a good way to kind of give us, give us, get us on a positive note if we enter this weekend. LSU's got a game – on uh, our LSU basketball has a game on Saturday uh, later in the afternoon. So get your football in in the morning and then go, uh, go check out LSU and the PMAC on Saturday. I know the women play tomorrow or they play Friday, uh, I believe in their second game of the year. So lots mm-hmm. of LSU sports going around uh, should be fun weekend. Uh, we'll, we'll certainly keep you guys uh, tuned in to everything going on and, We'll have a reaction pod on either later Saturday or Sunday, uh, but you know we'll we'll have all that stuff covered for you. So uh, make sure you guys are staying tuned in, and we'll catch you guys later.